bridge in front of him does it every day, so it's really nice to be see. Um, so yeah, I'm Sade. Uh, I recently joined the TVAP board of trustees. Um, I don't know if people at the Bridge Academy, I left seven years ago. Um, and I was just sort of coming today to tell you about my roller coaster journey, who I was when I came to Bridge, how Bridge supported me, and what I've gone on to achieve what I'm doing now. Um, so to start with, I need to tell you who I was when I was at the Bridge Academy. I was a very different person to who you see here today. Um, I was a really angry young person. I didn't like authority, I didn't like to be told what to do, um, I thought I was bigger and better than everyone around me, um, and I really didn't like formal education. I completely rebelled against the schools I was attending at the time. Um, I had about 80 exclusions, internal inclusions and suspensions. I was on red report for year seven. Uh, one point, I got escorted to all of my lessons by my head teacher to make sure that I didn't start fights in the corridors. Um, so it was pretty dark times for me. Um, during that time I had a lot of stuff going on at home, so I was hanging around with older people and I ended up getting into drugs and alcohol and smoking cigarettes and eating too much chicken and chips every day. <laughs> and I was living a really unhealthy uh, lifestyle. Um, so, yeah, I guess the main thing for me in school is that like, when I met teachers, I really enjoyed imitating them, I really enjoyed disrupting their lessons, I liked to see chaos that I could cause. And, I'm a very determined, ambitious person, so at that point I was using those skills in a really negative way. Uh, so, like I said, um, in those two secondary schools, my teachers just sort of gave up on me and they banned me, not only from lessons, but from entire blocks within the school. So I wasn't allowed in the science block, the drama block, the PE block, the maths block. The only place I could go was English and into internal inclusion, where I spent a lot of my time. Um, so naturally I bumped off a lot. Um, so by the time uh, I was kicked out of my second secondary school, I actually used to cry my eyes out and I was like, Mom, please don't send me to the um, Bridge Academy. Um, but my mum was actually good friends with the Shamers and my elder brother Danny went to um, Bridge at the time. So my mum was in love with the teacher then and she thought it could really help me. But obviously at 14 I didn't want to listen to my mum, I didn't think she knew what was best for me and I thought actually just not going to school at all and starting just working from 14 was the best thing for me. Anyway, so I ended up going to Bridge, um, and on my first day, I just sort of wanted to see how far I could push it. So, <laughs> um, obviously, I'd heard a lot about this uh, school being specialist in dealing with children with challenging behaviour, and I knew teachers found me challenging, so I just wanted to see how far how they would tolerate me. Um, so on my first day, I got into a confrontation with Shaman. Shaman. <laughs> 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 And I actually tried to smoke a spliff in front of him. Um, <laughs> okay, I did smoke a spliff in front of him. <laughs> in the corridor. Um, yes, I did. Sorry about that. I haven't apologised since. Um, uh, but I was also I was really angry and I was screaming at for him and I was basically saying like, I could earn so much more money selling drugs on the streets. I don't need you. What's education going to do for me? I could be rich in a minute. So, at that point, I left and um, ran away, jumped over the gates, ran as far as I could, um, and I also left home. So I lived independently for a year. I didn't go to school and I didn't see any of my family. And during that time, I hanged around with some dodgy people. Uh, and the drugs and the alcohol and the smoking and everything kind of spiraled out of control. And I ended up overdosing and in hospital in a coma. So when that happened, that was like pretty. Uh, low point. Um, but I realised that was actually a really good thing to happen because it meant that it gave me this kind of determination to actually go and do something with my life and not just waste it. So I went back to Bridge and I sat down with my teachers and obviously being quite arrogant, um, the conversation that I had was, I'm willing to learn but can we compromise? Um, so, and I was really fortunate that they said yes and they wanted to help me and they did help me. Um, and I know looking back, I really do see my education and the life that I've had as being privileged. And it's quite a weird thing to say because I know obviously know a lot of people who have had lovely homes growing up and you know went to university and they see themselves as privileged. But I really do. Like the support that I was given at Bridge, the one-to-one -one specialist care, people who genuinely wanted to see me get better. Like, you know, it's like what one of you girls said, like teachers were willing to take me out when I was angry. They threw me in the gym and put me on a boxing ring. Like, they did things with me that actually I wasn't going to get in mainstream school and 
It's not because teachers aren't good at mainstream schools, but my brother's a fantastic teacher in a mainstream um, school. It's just that when you have 30 children, you just need to get rid of the one that's disrupting the other 29 and preventing them from learning, and I completely can see that now. Um, Uh, yeah, so um, I guess like, the hardest thing I had to do when I was at Bridge was uh, eliminate all of the negative people around me and I was able to do that through health and social care which was my favourite subject by far um, and I spent a lot of time with the teacher Heather and I spent a lot of lunch times with her and after school so she dedicated this time to me and really helped me look at my life and map out the people around me and what a healthy relationship looks like, what a healthy eating, what a healthy lifestyle looks like. And with her support and with my mental support, I gave up drinking, I gave up drugs, I gave up um, cigarettes, I pretty much did it all cold turkey, um, and I got myself back on track. So basically I went back to Bridge for just one year, in year 11. Um, I left there with nine PCSEs, A to C, I got an A star as well in health and social care, thanks to Heather. Um, and I know that for me, it was a real catalyst for the change that happened in my life. Like it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't at Bridge. It, like I know for a fact I would not be standing here talking to you today. And I think it's a really powerful testimony to the work that they do with young people. Um, and obviously you've heard it from everybody here as well. Um, so that should be, I left Bridge, I tried to go to college. It didn't work for me. I wasn't supported, the classes were too big and I felt uh, ignored. Um, so I left and I fell into an apprenticeship in theatre as well and um, it was through that that I really found my passion and it was perfect for me because I got paid to learn and work. I had a lot of independence, I was <coughs> responsible uh, for things and I was treated like an adult and that's kind of what I wanted from when I've been about five, um, so <laughs> it was really good. Um, so yes, the pressure went really well. Um, after a year, I got promoted to assistant producer and I started to produce work around the building. Um, I started to develop my own work with emerging artists. Um, I left the Bush Theatre and I got headhunted by the Lyric Hamilton Theatre. And um, they offered me the opportunity to create a programme to support young people to get into the creative industries. So I created a programme from scratch and um, it included lots of apprenticeships, like the one that Sharif was on. Um, and it was offering people tangible opportunities and unlocking their natural potentials and really giving them a platform to share their voice and express themselves creatively. Um, I left the Lyric uh, <laughs> again, into advertising this time at Ogilvy and Mather, which is one of the biggest um, agencies in the world, um, it's what Mad Men is sort of based on, so it was a real opportunity. And I went there to create fundraising appeals for Centrepoint, which is a new purpose charity. And I did that for six months and then I left there and uh, got asked to go to the Barbican where I am now um, and I'm the community engagement manager at the Barbican and um, I've just completed a strategy for um, engaging hard to reach community groups with um, high quality art and taking the work that the Barbican produces in the city of London out into East London and particularly in outer London borough. Um, so obviously as you can see I've had a lot of achievements um, since I left um, but I guess the main thing for me, um, well actually there's two big things. One is um, a few weeks ago I got an award from Prince William for turning my life around. Um, so that was quite a big thing, I guess. I wasn't expecting it, it was quite random and it was, really, it was a really great night. Um, but the second thing uh, which I'm really proud of is that I got married a few weeks ago to my best friend. Um, and the reason why I say that, I wouldn't usually include that in the speech, but the reason why I do is because it actually boils back to all of that healthy relationship and understanding boundaries and patterns that I was creating in an unhealthy cycle when I was 14 at Bridge um, and actually that learning has carried me through all of my life um, so I'm really grateful for that. Um, and then I guess the, oh actually I have to say something, I mentioned my brother earlier and he'll kill me if I don't say this, um, he uh, is doing really well now um, and anyone who knew him when he was at Bridge um, would say he probably wasn't the nicest person, he was much worse than me, I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, he was hard work. Um, we, we, we both were with a handful for my mum. Um, but basically I called him last night and I told him um, I was doing this and he just wanted me to say um, from him that the best thing at the bridge was that um, he had people who actually listened to him and we went through quite a lot of um, 
abuse when we were younger, particularly from men, like my dad and his dad, and Danny didn't trust men at all. So when he got to bridge, that was one of the biggest things for him to actually have male teachers, and he, he hated it. Um, but actually, through the support that they did with him, he came out and he wrote to me last night, and he said, um, all in all, I felt the bridge helped me as a person, and I feel that I wouldn't be where I am now without them. I'm really grateful for the male mentors in particular. Um, and it's having positive men in my life that made me the man I am today. Um, and he's actually running his own carpentry business now, and he's doing a lot of conversions in West London and on your gates, he's doing very well. Um, but that was a skill he learned at the British Academy doing the tech. Um, and just finally, because I know I'm like battling on sorry, Jenna. Um, I just want to leave you with something that my mentor said to me when I first came, finally came back to bridge. Um, and I like, knocked on her door and I was obviously like, my tail was between my legs and I was like, I'm sorry. Um, and she was like, oh, okay, come in, but like, leave your suitcase. And I was like, baffled, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and she was like, yeah, like, you're carrying a lot of baggage with you, I can see it. And you can either choose to leave it at the door or you can bring it in with you, but either way, I'm going to help you sort it out. Um, so yeah, that was the best thing I got from Bridge. Thank you. Mm -hmm.